Hey guys, so today I'm gonna go over all the things I'm considering when I'm designing for 3D printing. Um, so the biggest three I would say is thin elements, overhangs or free floating points, and then thinly sculpted details. So I have three examples here of things that I have modeled where I'm gonna talk about all of those aspects. So here's my sky whale. I was really excited to do this one, um, but I was also kind of concerned because my style tends to be a very swirly, light details, in like thin elements, pretty much everything you don't want for 3D printing. Um, when I just drew with like a pen and paper, it wasn't a big deal, but obviously since I'm translating this to 3D, it's more of an issue. So when I was designing this, I got away with a lot of thin elements by just merging them onto the cloud base here. So this entire fin or wing, fin, I mean, it's flying, so I'm gonna go with wing. So the entire wing here, um, you don't have to worry about it because I have it merged through the clouds. So there's no design being sacrificed there and it's 3D printable. So other aspects I have here, this is still pretty challenging though. So I try to have the ends of the um, wing going upwards because it kind of conveys a design of like flying, upward motion, but at the same time, it's easier to 3D print because most things that I design, I consider 3D printing it with the base flat. That's just because like I, I've printed stuff like 45 degrees back. It's just not my favorite thing. I usually have to sand the... Uh, the base, get rid of any support marks. I want the base to be perfectly flat, which is a pers personal reference from mine. Anyway, so other issues I had here was this. These little like, uh, I don't know call these, tendrils, tentacles, are probably the worst part about this model because they're pointed downwards. I tried messing them with a lot, pointing them upwards. They just looked weird. So if I was gonna redesign this, what I would have done was I would have moved the ends of these just upwards a little bit. It just makes it a little bit easier to not worry about um, where they're going, if that makes sense. So that way I can just support the midpoint of it and not worry about sanding the more fragile endpoints. The third thing about this, I've gone over the thin elements and the overhanging parts would be the thinly sculpted details. So I texture the whole whale with like a skin or like elephant skin texture. But the problem is if I have that apparent enough to where it shows up in a 3D print, it looks kind of like ripply or wrinkly. I, I don't want some little wrinkly whale, you know what I mean? So I, it's there, you can barely see it, but it adds some texture to the model. It doesn't look like a completely smooth plastic toy doll. You have to look for the details, but after like a wash and some dry brushing, you'll probably see it turn out pretty nice. And if I really want more of that detail to appear, I'll just print it larger. Um, that's everything I want to talk about for this model. I'm not going to talk about more for standard miniatures that I do. So here's my eagle guy. A lot of things going on with him. So if I was gonna redesign him, the biggest flaw here is this spear. It's almost perfectly horizontal. I mentioned before that I print my models just flat on the build plate. You could angle it like this, so it's a vertical spear, but then you have all the problems here with the wings. I, I want the wings to be smooth and as nice looking as possible. So that's why for the wings here, I have them moving upward. Um, it's a really dramatic motion, so I'm not sacrificing design. I love how that looks, and it's really easy to support. So when I printed this, I only put like two supports on the end of each of the wings here, and the rest of it did itself, which I love that. It was really easy to support. So with larger models, what I would have done was it just pr print the wings separately. It's the biggest thing that you can do. Um, I don't like doing that personally. I don't like to assemble my miniatures and put, because you have to like usually close up the seams if I'm not perfect, you have to sand that. It's just more steps I don't need for something that's an inch or so tall. I want it to be pretty easy to just get some paint on there and use it as quickly as possible. Other than that, um, feather detailing. So the big thing with that is they are thin elements and they are thin details. So thin elements, I don't worry about too much because I just make the wings abnormally thick, but it looks well proportioned. But as far as like the detail, you got to just play a balance. You don't want the wings, um, the feathers look too bulky. You know, you can, I've seen it done really well. I haven't figured it out yet. So what I do is I just strike a balance essentially. So what I'll do is I'll texture the whole thing and then I'll go back with, it's called a damn standard brush. It's kind of like a crease brush if you haven't you're not familiar with them, Z brush and 3D modeling. And I'll go through there and I'll accentuate certain details. So the whole thing ends up looking more detailed even though the whole thing isn't painstakingly carved out, if that makes sense. And then the last one I wanna talk about is my wood elf, cause she is kind of the epitome of everything I said not to do. So the reason this model works is because I know what I'm looking for trying to prevent. So number one, thin elements. Scimitar, 
is a sword. It's super thin by nature, right? So what I did was I kind of moved the blade closer to the guard, um, onto one side of the guard, closer towards her. So since it's flush on that one side, I made it, uh, I inflated it all the way across. So this blade's actually like 25% thicker than it normally would be. If I printed her like as tall as me, for example, the blade would look ridiculous. But since it's so small, you're not gonna be able to tell. Another aspect of thin elements would be her hair. So she has this braid going on and then like the tip of it, I have connected to um, her wrist or like mid elbow wrist. Anyway, it's connected to her arm. So that way I have the motion of her braid still happening, but it's not gonna be hard to print because it's just connected to something else. So thin elements taken care of here. And then another thing I could say with thin elements is probably the fact she's standing on one leg. So I just, I love the pose here. The woman I was commissioning in this, um, that commissioned me for this, wanted this pose and it was so cool I really couldn't say no. So what I did was to combat that is once I put the base onto the model, I took an inflate brush and went all the way around her foot. So the 3D model looks kind of weird actually if you look at it really close because her foot is kind of like melting into the base. But when it's actually printed you can barely tell, which is great. So it's a good combination of design and function. Um, so thin elements out of the way, overhang. So obviously the sword is really fragile as it is, so I really don't want to have too much overhang. So I have it pointed upward as possible. I probably could angled it even a little bit more, but I had luxury with resin printer, so I knew I could get away with it, so I did. Um, other than overhang elements, same thing with her arm here, I kind of have it posed up like this. Um, I tucked her elbow as much as possible without her looking awkward, so that way, if that is supported, this is all gonna print naturally because it's only like a 45 degree angle. And the last thing would be like thinly sculpted details. So she has a lot of details going on here because she's a ranger, so I put a lot of belts and straps and pockets on her. It's just really important to go through and like really carve those details out. Sometimes what I'll do is with models, <laughs> the model that I share like on Instagram or Facebook, the renders are different than the model I print. And the reason for that is people will be like, oh wow, it looks so rough. And I'm like, you need to do that for it to look good. I've seen people that don't need to do that. They'll have just one version of their model looks fantastic. I pretty much rarely do that anymore, but it's something to consider. Like I was that adamant about going through and sculpting them out as much as possible. So that way it's gonna show up when I print it. Only an inch or so tall. So a review for like the fourth time. I'm repeating myself a lot here, but it's really important. We have thin elements, overhangs or free floating points, and then thinly sculpted details. Keep all those things in mind. You don't have to avoid them entirely. I obviously don't. <laughs> um, just keep it in mind when designing and it'll make it so much easier when you're 3D printing. So yeah, that's everything. If you have any questions, just let me know. Till next time.